So, this course is primarily uh, a core course for all branch B Tech students, but uh, uh, I mean they, they, they do some course in all the colleges probably on fluid mechanics. Some colleges it is fluid mechanics, thermodynamics combined, some colleges it is 1 P O fluid mechanics and some colleges it is uh, fluid mechanics, fluid machinery together and things like that in the undergraduate level. But for mechanical and civil, there will be more than one courses on fluid mechanics. So, this course, uh, uh, this uh, 40 minutes, I am trying to just uh, say you that how I go ahead with the fluid mechanics teaching, which is the basic fluid mechanics course. For the other department uh, faculty members, I think it is just how I teach a course, which is a quite mathematically involved uh, subject, but uh, there are a lot of spectacular applications in that and how you can link them and uh, at the end most of our teaching is theoretical based teaching. So, this this course how we teach also mostly in the theoretical base address at the end what I will put my thought regarding probably the more effective way how we can teach this uh, fluid mechanics as a subject. Primarily again this is undergraduate students teaching uh, I am talking about. So, this uh, course related to undergraduate students how we teach and most of the topics that we are talking about we teach in IIT second year undergraduate students. We have a core course which is uh, called fluid mechanics and rate process in which uh, uh, like aero, civil, chemical, mechanical some of these department students have to do. In addition other students also uh, will be doing material science students they do the uh, course. Then many computer science, physics, chemist, uh, chemist physics, maths, uh, electronics, electrical students also take this course, because they have some requirement here that they have to do some co such uh, courses in which usually there will be large number of students, 300 plus students will be there, because from uh, this, ki this kind of institute level core course that we have in our curriculum, UG curriculum. So, I have taught this course several time in that uh, UG curriculum. So, I can highlight few things. Generally, the textbook, this is purely those who teaches for them. The textbook that I uh, use is uh, fluid mechanics by white. There are uh, some other textbook, a similar textbook is Fox and McDonald, similar to this. And this book is uh, uh, special in the sense this book is written by civil engineer professor of MIT after his retirement. So, he used his experience to write a very concise book, but many concept will be uh, very uh, clear if you go through that book like uh, derivation of Bernoulli's equation, what is material derivative, what total derivative and what is difference between total derivative, local derivative and those kind of concepts will be very clear if we, uh, if you read this uh, phase book. So, usually I follow these books. This book is another book in which has a uh, lot of uh, good problems. So, you can it is a collection of problems from different books you will see and very uh, good problem in the sense some tough problems are also there which uh, helps to clear the concept of the students. Usually, the syllabus that we follow is uh, introduction followed by continuum definition of fluid, then uh, properties, different properties. Then we go to fluid statics, which is covered in for in the civil engineering level quite in detail, whereas uh, in a core course, we cover only the basics. Okay. And uh, then we talk about the kinematics, where we do not consider the forces the motions, the velocities and the uh, motions we consider acceleration. Then we go to the dynamics where the Reynolds transport theorem we use for deriving the conservation of mass, momentum etcetera. Then we go to the derivation of the Navier-Stokes equation either here or here. We talk about the Bernoulli's equation and the total energy equation and there is a uh, topic of dimension analysis that we talk. I will talk about these things little little here, not everything. Potential flow, introduction to Prandtl boundary layer, what is the effect of 
if the boundary layer if the flow is diverging or flow is accelerating what will be the effect that is coming in the pressure gradient such effects how uh, creates some separated flow which will I will show some examples and this little bit I covered how the cricket ball swing okay why there is dimples on the golf ball okay when you give a back spin in your in your table tennis ball why it goes and falls like this so these are all uh, can be explained with even basic potential flow and the separated flow uh, uh, what we observe so this just motivates the student because uh, sports they connect very easily so that that's how that's why usually i talk little bit about this typically we cover 38 to 40 lectures we generally we get 48 lectures okay so 40 lectures we get and then we will have the problem solving class because it is undergraduate course is for any course probably we will have a problem solving class and this class be, being a huge class the class of 30 the way you can interact and class of 300 the interaction will be uh, difficult so we also have the problem solving class where there will be tutors who are professors and the uh, senior phd students may be some cases good phd students they will be going and solve some problems which we give as an assignment for that particular week and then we also give some practice problem in addition so that problem solving class is like one to one interaction to clear your doubt even in the theory part what the instructor as instructor if i have taught it is not very clear to some student they can ask you and in the in the tutorial class that's how we clear it so this helps you to design your curriculum that how we teach this course because there are you can see that once you have a tutorial I have kept these dates because every week we have one day tutorial and each day we have to decide what we are going to cover. So, that week we have to cover that topic give some problem on that and discuss those problem in the class students are supposed to solve and come into the tutorial class. So, this is how we go uh, and we plan the course when we teach this uh, in fact any core course as such. In the fluid mechanics, the introduction time I try to motivate the student in terms of giving lot of examples where we see the examples in automobiles, aircraft, vessels, pipe networks, then fluidic devices, electronic cooling, many such examples where fluid mechanics is actively involved. This projector is working fine in, in summer also in our country. The projector which is designed in Europe. One, one year summer I went to Germany, Gottingen and the pr they do not even have the fan and this that year it was very hot, very hot means temperature was close to 35, 30, uh, 34, 35 degree and their projectors were not working after few maybe after an hour or two it was just stopping because of the heat problem because their design is does not require that much of cooling whereas in our country the design requires different cooling. So, that is an example of electronic cooling what is required in your design. So, they had to put some fan get somewhere arrange some fan and then put on the projector to run it continuously and keep a standby projector to replace it and swap it to uh, it was not fixed projector like that that time luckily it is 2006 I am talking. So, so, this, this kind of cooling and all this thing electronic cooling and all these things are lot of energy a uh, lot of application wind energy then a lot of application in the nature in fluid mechanics which can motivate the students even the biology students if there are any biology faculties you will see that there are a lot of application which is quite interesting. So, I will talk about little bit more of this application because the topics how we teach entire details in 40 minutes covering will be very difficult except one or two I will teach only. Yeah, I will uh, talk only few in little details the rest I will talk about this. If you see the fluid mechanics it is a subject where you will see very many attractive features. This is just a simple drop think about raindrop falling in a station quotient uh, lake and you will see this kind of pattern when this drop falls on the lake and then you, there will be a thin flame kind of structure forms you will see waves on that and then the, that film break breaks kind of fingers 
and those fingers again breaks into small uh, spherical drops. So, it is so many phenomena here the waves that is traveling later on. So, all this, but it, it as soon as you see this picture you feel oh it is a spectacular picture. So, you get attracted and then you start looking at what it is. So, if you see this subject, who started this subject fluid mechanics? Anybody? Okay. So, I got the answer Prandtl. Prandtl is called more or less a father of fluid mechanics for in many respect, but if you see the start of fluid mechanics is the Da Vinci's work. So, if you see Da Vinci's work in any field you will see lot of sketches on any area and if you see the sketches this is kind of eddies generated behind a dam on flow past a cylinder how these vortices form. Right now I showed you the drops and you can see that how these different drops bouncing. There are flows inside the heart, how it is coming out the flow from the aorta inside heart how the vortices form all different sketches you will find. Unfortunately, all these pictures were discovered 300 years after his death, but he started probably many topic including the uh, this thing. So, these are some of his drawing in the internal flow you can see this 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 is a topic which biologists even today uh, research how the cholesterol deposition happen when the two branches of the uh, your uh, circulatory systems uh, two branches of the veins are joined and there is usually deposition there and how these vortices play a role and he looked into those things at that time you can imagine. That time even the differential equations were not there at that time even the you did not know how to write the continuum mechanics equations, but he did it pictorially showed all these things and many things can be discovered from that and then comes the Prandtl. So, if you see the 1904 Prandtl actually made lot of changes before that the fluid mechanics was a subject of flow that means, you do not consider the real flow what is envisaged at viscous flow difference that I will talk later on. So, he brought in the effect of viscosity and you can see that the I this picture impressed me because you can see this is a flow for generating facility today you will see the water tunnel, water channel, wind tunnel all this modern facilities and you will see any advanced topic many advanced topic these names like Pandel, uh, Raleigh and all these names you will see, but their experiments they have done with very elementary facilities they developed, but many of those data are so impressive. Okay. So, that this was one of his flow generating facility where he is using a driving wheel to drive the flow. So, you did not have the that time pump or uh, things that you want to do. Because it is a subject of spectacular uh, uh, pictures that you can generate this is how the dive flowing over a car and over a blub body. This is over a cyclist if the helmet is like that how it will affect the flow if helmet is pushed back then you have a very nice streamlined flow. So, you will reduce you will experience less drag. So, uh, you will have less effort. This is a picture which I will show a video when an aircraft flies you will see that in the tip of the air, aircraft wing such a huge vortex is formed. So, if this kind of vortex is forming that means that much energy is imparted on this fluid and energy is coming only from your engine. So, this actually caused a drag in the aircraft called induced drag. Okay. So, you see this is a bridge and if you carefully see this the shadows here which are nothing but this wake from these pillars which if you look in this case it will have this kind of structure which has been seen in this natural world in this island in the cloud is very below and then you can see such structure in the laboratory you can create such over a pillar or over a cylinder you will see this kind of vortex structure which is called Karman vortex state. So, this these are some of the uh, pictures that we see often you can see stunning similarity between these two picture when this duck is swimming and this boat is uh, uh, going in this uh, river and you can see the similarity you can also closely if you look at you can see the dissimilarities also.
in very high Mach number flow the aircraft you see there are these are these are called shocks where you will see a large density jump okay, in the flow and this is this is this pictures are either sadograph or slide in some pictures you can take and you can see how the flow field look like. They are also behind that flow will be like behind that car we saw the flow that is the wake region. You see in our human body this is our circulatory system similarly our respiratory system the flow is like a pump is driving the flow through a pipe network is exactly what we do in our pipe network uh, through which how we uh, supply uh, the required this it is like in our in academic complex uh, complex the hostel lecture hall residential area everywhere you uh, take the supply the water take the collect the waste water and this thing similar to our circulatory systems and these are all can be designed when you have a very undergraduate level elementary fluid mechanics knowledge that is one important thing okay this is uh, a picture where you are seeing a natural flare and this pictures I show this came in nature 2002 a butterfly was flown in a wind tunnel okay and this experiment in 2002 they did to capture how this flow over this butterfly wing looks like just to verify that just to understand that. <laughs> In a wind tunnel, if you put a butterfly, how you can observe? So, what they did, because in abroad the collaboration is very good. So, in any experiment, there will be biologists, there will be electronics person, there will be fluid mechanics person, there will be computational person, there will be mathematics person, and they have a team and then, then they make something, they study something. Okay? In this case, just to study that, they had a scented flowers inside the tunnel. So, the butterfly will attract from one flower artificial flowers there. one flower to other flower it will fly and then you can observe that while you have created this kind of smoke inside the tunnel. And how many camera you need? So, in this case they use 13 CCD cameras to capture this. So, at that time channel 9 used to use 9 cameras to cover a cricket match okay, and that was the best. So, that is that kind of uh, uh, research that goes on. This I have a particular interest in biological flow that is why I am showing this because on as an example how people work and things like that. And uh, this is one of the thing where this bird is our artificial bird and these are all other birds are all natural bird. So, this artificial bird we have developed I will talk about it tomorrow when we will be discussing about UG project and all. So, this is a flapping wing uh, this thing and these are also flapping wing things. So, the flapping wing and dynamics to understand how we work. This is another example of if you have a exhaust nozzle from an engine, then you want to reduce the signature to minimize. So, you want to mix them. So, if you make this lobed kind of nozzle, then the mixing will be much better and that is what is visualized here and you can see a different x distance from the nozzle how the cross sectional view it will look like and you see very nice structures and how they break down and things like that. These are the fluid mechanics where we see try to see how the breakdown occurs what the structure forms and things like other than the this thing. So, many of this time we try to see visualize the flow and some of the examples we try to give is to visualize the flow and uh, so, in this case two bodies, this is the sports cars of 50s, today's natural car, normal cars and you can see that this region where the flow is disturbed that is the wake region is width is quite less compared to this which is quite high. So, this will produce more drag that means more resistance, this wake size will determine this and as a result mileage of this will be much less compared to this and today's sports car is complete aerodynamic design. So, it is it is mileage is much higher compared to that. So, we come to the question of what kind of thing if this is a very smooth streamlined body then you can see the flow will be very nicely attached and things, but when we make this body bluff then you will have this kind of separated flow which causes more drag 
Okay. So, you, you try to design something which will be sleek, trim line and so that you have a very nice smooth flow that is what is the expectation. Question of now the viscous effect and in which it as a as taking, telling. So, this is an example where you can see that fluid particles very near to the surface is sticking to the wall on the surface and near to the surface has less velocity compared to the far away from the this is the effect of viscosity, which is kind of a friction. It is trying to stop these fluid particles. So, it is dragging them more due to friction. Okay. This is a shear force and this have less friction in this as you far away from the wall. So, whenever you talk about the viscous flow on the boundary, the if the boundary is stationary, fluid will be stationary. But before Prandtl, this was not considered it always allowed that slip because we consider inviscid flow, so the particles can move. So, this kind of example to give this uh, students an idea about what is uh, the no slip boundary condition. Same way this is the laminar flow, you have a smooth dry pattern, you have a turbulent flow, you have a quite a random flow. So, laminar turbulent one visual such picture will actually will be easy for the student to remember than anything else. This is another that aircraft when it go, goes, you can see the tip how this recirculatory flow which we call vortex that is formed. This is a volcano when you can see the during the volcanic eruption such structures are forms and these are again those kind of vortices which is forming a bangle kind of a ring pattern and when it forms a ring pattern, it moves, it has a self propelling velocity which can be explained from elementary inviscid flow calculation. Okay. So, that is how uh, uh, you can see many of these things. A major application of fluid dynamics is the Wright brothers discovery and this story I tell because I am from aerospace engineering and it is a very qu quite motivating story how you encourage the student that how you build something. Okay. Wright brothers in 1903 or 04 they flew first. Okay. So, before they flew first, one year before they had the first trial. So, in Dayton they had a cycle shop in which they first did all this thing and they went to uh, I think California some place and then they tried to flew Kitty Hawk there. So, when uh, they tried to flew this their first uh, Wright brothers flyer, it did not fly and they had put lot of effort okay, both the brothers and they it could not fly. So, they used the best available theory at that time to design their model and that theory was theory of Langley and Lelinthal. NASA Langley you have heard probably that Langley and Lelinthan was a German engineer who has made by that time lot of gliders and all these things and flying. So, their theory were at the that time inviscid theory because that time the viscous effect came in 1904 when Prandtl started this thing. So, they used that theory and designed their model and then that theory predict how much lift you require to fly float, but their model was not able to lift off and they realize that whatever required, whatever they have designed that is supposed to create this much slip force to make their uh, flyer float, that was not happening. So, they realize that uh, uh, there is something wrong. So, they are so frustrated, they said thousand years nobody is going to fly. Okay. So, that was their statement, thousand years nobody is going to fly and next year they themselves flew the first the right flyers. Okay. What did they do? So, they did these stories you will get today in the internet is so common everybody is having internet you can read and tell the students these stories so common today. So, what did they do? In one year they went back to their cycle shop made a wind tunnel which is just 16 feet long 1 feet square and they tested different wing models models of the swing and measured how much force it is generating. So, they went back to experiment 
to see how much it is generating. And in one year, how many models they have built and tested? Any idea, anybody? In one year, you can think you do a lot of BTEC project, you give, ask them to do some model, fabricate, do some testing. So, in one year, these two brothers, how many models they might have built and tested? Any idea? Yes? 200 models they tested in one year, 365 days. <laughs> So, so they, they tested 200 models and what, is, what did they found? They found that if this is what the wing size they are using, because of this three dimensional effect just I showed and the theory is two dimensional, this wing is not producing enough lift, the force that it should float and they should use much longer span that is much length should be much more. So, that this three dimensional effect is mar marginal, the two dimensional effect, two dimensional theory whatever it is the lift it is producing that is more than that three dimensional effect which is small. So, they just change the length of the wing, the length and the chord is called the ratio is called the aspect ratio. So, they increase the aspect ratio and they found they were using something like three 1 point something or 2 and they increased it to 6.2 or something and then they flew next year. So, the finding is thanks. So, finding is for hard work and the hard work is very systematically doing an experiment and find that. So, the if you want to build something you, you have some idea, you need the theory, theory, also you need where how you can apply the theory and that is how the one of the uh, example of fluid mechanics which is given one of the very nice discovery. If you see this is what their tunnel picture okay? and these are the models they were mounting and the way they were measuring the forces, they were having all the cycle spoke and they had a needle to keep a dial kind of thing, it is finally, it is a measurement of weight. So, it is how you put your spokes and cycle strings in such a way that the force in this direction particular direction will be shown by one dial, force in another direction will be shown by another dial and such thing. So, that they measured the forces lift drag everything in the wind tunnel that they had designed. So, for making things designing things you just always do not need a very sophisticated thing and that is what is the situation where we should able to make things with Zugard. We will talk about that more. So, let us come back to the fluid mechanics part little more, we have little hmm, time. So, let us say the first topic that we covered is the continuum and what is continuum. So, when we talk about this, suppose if we take a region of gas and you take a small volume and this small volume I am uh, observing in a microscope. Okay. So, it is so small that I am observing in a microscope. So, it has few number of molecules. This volume if I move from here to here to here to here, that number of molecules will be different in that particular volume. So, I may have a density which is mass of the molecules present in that volume divided by that volume, that is the density definition, okay. mass per unit volume. I may get it here depending on number molecule here, here, here anything I can get it. So, that means, I have to if I have to understand the physics in this small volume, then I have to look into each molecular level. So, I have to look into kinetic theory of gases, but if, if I increase the volume little large this is the volume axis as slowly we increase then this uncertainty will decrease and we will get a constant density. Okay. So, the minimum volume that is required to define a constant density, we will say the water density is 1000 kg per meter cube or air density is 1.2 kg per meter cube. That when we talk about this volume and that volume is proportional to mean free path q. So, it is as if mean free path all of us know, class 12 we know the two molecules when colliding each other the average distance they travel. So, if I take a volume of the mean free path, then the number of molecules inside this volume which is present, 
the probability that number of molecule going out of that volume and probability number of molecule coming in will be same. If we take a smaller than that, it is not necessarily all the molecules may go out of the volume and nothing may come in. Okay. So, that is what is why the minimum volume that is required of, of the order of mean free path skew. So, when we talk about this mean free path skew, this lambda q that is the small volume we are talking of and this small volume is my continuum limit. And if you see that small volume, how many molecules are there? There will be very large number of molecules that is 3 into 10 to the power 7 molecules. So, which is sufficient number of molecules. So, 1, 2 molecule this way that way will not make much change. So, that is why the density we can define it in this fashion. Now, that volume is very small. So, I can continue that volume one after another, one after another and I can draw a continuous curve and I can say the properties of that in terms of a that is the continuum. So, it is a properties of a continuous function all we can apply that means differential calculus we can apply. So, that is why we describe this subject the mathematics part we can come in in terms of the differential calculus because we discuss in the continuum. Now, if I take this volume too big let us say sea water density is changing along the height. If I take the volume too large then again the density will increase. So, this is called macroscopic uncertainty and this is called microscopic uncertainty. So, continuum is somewhere where we are in between. So, we are talking about whenever density, pressure, temperature all we are defining, defining of a fluid particle which is of the order of lambda q the size. So, then we talk about the other properties. Okay. This is all these properties we talk we talk about the Newtonian, non-Newtonian fluid depending on the how the uh, shear stress or stress changes with the strain rate in this case fluid and we talk about the fluid statics. In fluid statics, we have to define the, we say that as we go if, if we take a tank, tank of water as we go down the pressure will increase all we know. If you go in deep inside the sea there will be lot of pressures that is because this water column is giving the pressure right. So, we write d p d z is equal to rho g kind of thing, but instead of that we should take a control volume say p here it is p plus del p del x d x. So, these are the pressure acting if I take the summation of all these forces then this will come as a gradient of p and the gravity force which will be. So, if we make a balance equation you will get del p is equal to rho g that is the right equation that is the equation of hydrostatics. Okay. Same way then you talk about the uh, different kinematics and this is where it is important is the material derivative another topic which we talk. We define a space and we say that suppose this is my aircraft I am looking at the space how the flow is happening over that. So, we look at this space and we say that pressure velocity temperature all are changing in this space with x y z. So, let us say density is a function of x y z t. Now, as the fluid particle moves from here to here at t plus delta t time this rho is changed to rho plus d rho this is not visible in this uh, screen. So, rho plus this is not minus this is rho plus d rho. Okay. So, now this rho as a function of x y z which is now already in description when you have written, but when we are writing here rho and I am following this fluid particle then the rho is changed to rho plus d rho then it is the d rho d t which is the change of the density of this fluid particle. So, if I am follow this fluid mass as it move from here to here its density is changing then this is d rho d t because that is where I am following the fluid mass that particular mass okay. that particular material I am following it is a Lagrangian description. Okay. But we are defined this is easier to define because so many fluid particle we cannot track. So, it is define a space and all this in that space we can define a density which is a function of x y z t. I can easily write that uh, using chain loop or partial differential 
this all of you follow that if rho is a function of x y z t then d rho I can write like this. This means when x y z is constant this means other variables are constant. So, partial differential which can be written this term is this and this three term can be written as this dot this this is a dot product. This is nothing but del rho and this is is d r which is the this distance. This d r if the velocity is v this is v d t. So, I can write this is equal to v d t del rho. So, whatever is d rho change in density of this fluid mass when you have defined in this fashion that is actually this plus v dot del rho then d t. So, my d rho d t which is the material rate of change of this property rho is del rho del t which is local rate of change of the property because del rho del t means x y z fixed. So, at that local point what is the density change plus because it is moving next instant of time another particle is occupied here. So, because of this convection this v dot del will come that v dot del rho. So, this is called material derivative or the total derivative capital D rho d t sometime we write this is partial derivative and this is the convective part of it. So, this is how we define this material derivative. Same way when we talk to fluid acceleration if we replace rho by velocity you will get acceleration and if I take acceleration at this particular point it is constant with respect to time, but actually fluid is accelerating because velocity is increasing which is that other part of that equation that v dot del rho that part is giving the acceleration of the fluid particle. So, this is how you take an example and show it. So, this is just a one topic I showed you because uh, we do not have much time. I will just show you another uh, cases the streamline, stick line, path line use Bernoulli's equation which, which is very old equation. Usually all of you are familiar with pressure, velocity and gravity head how we write and many a times students write it wrongly ask them to write the unit of each term then they will verify whether it is right and wrong, but derivation of this equation is very important. So, three way you can derive you can take a stream tube and make the force balance okay, and you can derive write the uh, equations and you can write you can write the Euler equation and you can derive from this Euler equation this uh, this equation you can derive and also derive from the energy equation where you can bring in the losses. All three derivations are important and you should do all these three, three derivation to the students because all three derivation will show the limitations that uh, approximation that are required for these derivations. So, phase book you will see the differential form of derivation I cannot go through all these details. Okay. Similarly, Reynolds transport theorem is another important thing for fluid mechanics. Then we talk about the potential flow, we talk about different potential flows. Here the fluid mechanics people will know that talk about, we are talking about the flow per inviscid flow per stress circular cylinder and the actual flow inviscid flow what is the difference. And then if in the cylinder if we give a rotation what happens there is a force acting in this direction that is called the Magnus effect, but it is not Magnus effect change the name it is not Magnus effect it is Robbins Magnus effect. Okay. Because Robbins did this discovery much before when he was working in East India Company and uh, published that paper in Indian Journal Magnus did it much later and we call this Magnus effect. Today most of the people call it Robbins Magnus effect Robbins did it for a sphere Magnus did it for a cylinder. Okay. So, wherever I write I write Robbins Magnus effect. Okay. So, you can talk about this different potential flows where I think the method of images like if the potential flow is there in the presence of a wall then you can replace that by a another <coughs> image of that mirror image of that potential flow that you must discuss. Then the last point I want to talk about that if all this teaching we are doing in the mathematical form initially I showed some application quickly I am showing that. But finally, many of these principles you can do it with simple example. This is a paper of an education engineering education published. They have published 139 articles on this how you should teach fluid mechanics and there is only one where they talk about the experiments. 
but many of the principles you can talk like this Bernoulli's principle how far it will go depending on this height of these things that will the Bernoulli's principle which can be simple experiment. The problem of the experiment say this experiment you will be doing in a field. I have to take 300 students there to simple one idea in 40 minutes of class I can or 50 minutes of class I can make say, explain many more ideas. So, we need small small table top classroom I should able to explain these principles I should have a small tabletop experimental setup. One of the aim is in that equip that designing some <laughs> such thing and I am planning some and any of you are ready to join summer you can visit here we are planning to do at least some five such principle to demonstrate on fluid dynamics which we can carry in the classroom and demonstrate the principle to the student while discussing in the class. Because that is the ultimate way you can actually attract the student to the subject, ultimate way you can explain the things to the student probably that is what my belief is and Tekip has agreed to help me. So, we are going to not very expensive, we are going to make some at least five such small setups which can be taken to the classroom while explaining that particular topic. And we will if you are coming like say 5 institute or 6 institute people are coming to in this activity during summer which, which will be mostly uh, in June or something uh, or early May sorry May uh, not early May third week of May to first week of June in that because from June first week I won't be here. So, we are planning to do something two three weeks and if we make we will make for all institute one 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 you carry your thing we will have one and this is how we should think of teaching. So, that is thank you. So, this is another that ring you saw how you see the dolphin uses that for their amusement. Okay. I think my time is over. So, they know that this ring moves on its own okay. and they know when it becomes big it moves very slowly. So, they cut it into a small one so that again it moves and they know if it make it non circular it will break down you will see that.